Sin is determined by God's word, not by the laws of men, and certainly not by the opinions of Facebook. Foods permitted or forbidden. And finding the personality of God. All of this and more coming up next. Stay right there. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. My name is Rod Hemmer. And I'm Janice. And this is Bible Discovery TV on Quick Study. Thank you for joining us today as we go through the Bible in one year. It has much to say to us right now, right here. And on this program, get your power guides out because we are going to study. Reading Leviticus chapter 11 to 13, we're going to focus specifically on Leviticus chapter 13, 1 to 13. Sin is determined by God's word, not the laws of men, and certainly not by the popular opinion polls of the media. Now, we'll explain why that's very important in today's moral crisis world coming up in just a moment. Corey is also here with Bible history and archaeology. Corey? Well, God has always given a bad rap when uh, we read about him in the Old Testament. A lot of people say he's very judgmental and harsh. We're going to be answering some of those from the Old Testament today. All right, apologetics on God's character from the Tanakh. What do you know? Well, we're talking about food today. Do you know, permitted or forbidden, anything in the water that has fins and scales? All right, very good. That and more coming up. Stay there. Here's Corey. Today we're reading from the book of Leviticus. Now here in the scriptures, people often blame God. They accuse God of being too harsh, too judgmental, too cut and dry. But they're losing focus of what God is saying within these first five books of the Bible. Take a look at this. Within the content of the first two books of the Bible, revealing information on the character of God is given. The personality of God established in the beginning is important. It should act as the reader's foundational point of understanding. Whatever he or she learns about God from the rest of recorded history should be anchored by the first descriptions of God's personality. In the creation account, God is shown as creative truth that is, that exists and cannot be resisted successfully. Many attributes of God are built upon this foundation of living truth. But there is one that is the star of Genesis and Exodus, God as a rescuer. More than once, God is seen to initiate salvage operations for mankind. In Genesis chapters 6 through 9, we learn of the flood of Noah. This history is often used to give God a bad reputation as a judgmental tyrant. But the careful reader will notice instead a different emphasis. Mankind is recorded as morally ruined, enacting terribly strange corruption regularly except for one family, that of Noah, whom God rescues from the corruption of humanity and from the judgment of that corruption, the flood. Genesis chapters 18 and 19 record another famous saving act that again is often used to blacklist God, the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. In this history, we have God setting up Abraham to negotiate for the survival of the cities. When Abraham's mercy has run out, God still sends angels to one of the cities. When they still cannot meet Abraham's criteria for survival, the family of Lot is still saved. 
A third famous rescue of the righteous is seen in the event of the Exodus. God hears and sees the enslavement of the descendants of Abraham, and through a long, miraculous process, he saves and purifies them. One of the early established characteristics of God is his desire to save. You know, God is given a bad rap and he shouldn't be. He is a rescuer, he is a savior, he is a creator. And that is clearly revealed in the first five books of the Bible. And when you get to some areas where it hits you the wrong way, some of these laws rub you the wrong way, you know, God has already established his personality in Genesis and Exodus. So when you get to Leviticus, when we get to the law, it's worth taking a step back and trying to find out what is God actually saying here? What is he doing? What is this a sign of? What is this here for? Because everything in the law has a reason, has a purpose, and it's about teaching. And if he was so judgmental, then why did God so love the world that he gave his only begotten son? Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, who fulfilled the law, Corey. Yeah, exactly. And that God isn't just a God of the New Testament. He is the same in the Old Testament. And that is revealed, especially established in the book of Genesis. In our power guide, our reading is Leviticus chapter 11 to 13 in Torah. We are studying the superheroes of the Bible. Now, the Bible is revealing the nature of the universe right here in Leviticus. It is not merely a physical universe. You see, the Bible teaches that the seen world was made from that which is unseen. In other words, there are spiritual elements to the universe that are deeply embedded into the physical. These absolutes are hinted at in Leviticus chapter 13. The reality of sickness is that it has a spiritual root and a cause. Sin eats away and destroys God's plan for our spirit, for our soul, and for our body. So Leviticus 13 tells the truth about sickness and sin and how to overcome it. Leviticus 13, 1 through 13. And the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, When a man has on the skin of his body a swelling, a scab, or a bright spot, and it becomes on the skin of his body like a leprous sore, then he shall be brought to Aaron the priest, or to one of his sons the priests. The priest shall examine the sore on the skin of the body, and if the hair on the sore has turned white, and the sore appears to be deeper than the skin of his body, it is a leprous sore. Then the priest shall examine him and pronounce him unclean. But if the bright spot is white on the skin of his body and does not appear to be deeper than the skin and its hair has not turned white, then the priest shall isolate the one who has the sore seven days and the priest shall examine him on the seventh day, and indeed, if the sore appears to be as it was, and the sore has not spread on the skin, then the priest shall isolate him another seven days. Then the priest shall examine him again on the seventh day, and indeed, if the sore has faded, and the sore has not spread on the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him clean. It is only a scab and he shall wash his clothes and be clean. But if the scab should at all spread over the skin after he has been seen by the priest for his cleansing, he shall be seen by the priest again. And if the priest sees that the scab has indeed spread on the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is leprosy. When the leprous sore is on a person, then he shall be brought to the priest. And the priest shall examine him, and indeed, if the swelling on the skin is white, and it has turned the hair white, and there is a spot of raw flesh in the swelling, it is an old leprosy on the skin of his body. The priest shall pronounce him unclean, and shall not isolate him, for he is unclean. 
and if leprosy breaks out all over the skin, and the leprosy covers all the skin of the one who has the sore from his head to his foot, wherever the priest looks, then the priest shall consider. And indeed, if the leprosy has covered all his body, he shall pronounce him clean who has the sore, and it has all turned white, he is clean. Leviticus chapter 13, verses 1 through 13. Bible Discovery TV here, Rod Hembry. Great to have you with us as we continue to work our way through the Scripture. Now today we continue in the book of Leviticus. Jesus Christ said, from the abundance of the heart does the mouth speak. So if you want to hear what someone's attitudes of the hearts are, there's two ways. Number one, you can see it in their offerings, and number two, you can see it in how they present themselves or how they speak. Now here in Leviticus, this is what God is saying to the nation of ancient Israel in that distant culture. So by reverse engineering, we find the principles of God's heart in the Mosaic law. Very, very important for us to understand that. So today I call this as we look at the overview, get your power guides out and join us. This is in the power guide. I call this strong medicine. And our reading assignment is Leviticus chapter 11 to 13, with our focus being on Leviticus 13, uh, chapters 1, or verses 1 to 15. Now, again, I want to emphasize that uh, study this further later in the day. We're going to teach from three points out of the power guide here. There are four in the power guide, but get it out and study it again and look at the scripture again later in the day so you can seal it in your heart. Let's take a look at the passage. Here, beloved, is God's word. And so, The Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, When a man has on the skin of his body a swelling scab or a bright spot and becomes on the skin of his body like leprosore, then he shall be brought to Aaron, to the priest, or to one of his sons, the priest, and the priest shall examine the sore on the skin of the body. And if the hair of the sore is turned white, the sore appears to be deeper than the skin in the body. It is a leprosore. Then the priest shall examine him and pronounce him unclean. You might say, what in the world are you talking about? Well, God's priest uh, in the ancient nation of Israel uh, were not separated from medical practice. The body, the soul, and the spirit were considered one. In today's world, we've dissected and made it three, but it's not really true. Because 60, there, are, there are 65% of all doctor's visits can be eliminated by releasing bitterness and anger. That according to the late Dr. S.I. McMillan in his book, None of These Diseases. So you see they are connected. But my point is that here we see that leprosy represents the fatal condition of sin. Notice it's the priest who does the diagnosis. What does that tell us? What's the principle? Simple. Sin, beloved, is determined by God's word, not by the mood of society or the consensus of some religious council. Sin, beloved, is determined by God's word, not by the opinions of Facebook. Sin is determined by God's word, uh, not by the opinions of the media. Sin is determined by God's word. And so the priest and the pastor and the prophet should be familiar with what God believes and thinks and tells us sin is. Look at the next verse, verse 4. But if the bright spot is white and the skin of his body does not appear to be deeper than the skin and the hair has not turned white, then the priest shall isolate the one who has the sore for seven days. It's really interesting uh, because now we see another principle that, that comes to play, especially in the complications of our, of our sin nature. Here it is. Sin is not always easy to see unless we get alone with God and ourselves. We must seek God's help to be headed away from the wrong sinful pra- uh, passages, healed from the wrong sinful passage or passages practiced in our life. What I'm trying to say is this. The important thing to remember is that when we are alone with God and there are no distractions from the cell phone or, or no distractions from, I don't know what, the TV set or the, the latest uh, cooking show, Chopped or whatever it is, when we are not distracted by all of that stuff and we get alone with God, He speaks to us. Sometimes we run away from that because we know what He's going to say. He's going to convict us of things that we need to change in our lives. 
Sometimes sin's not hard to see. We need to get alone with God frequently so that we can deal with the sin in our lives. Look at verse 5. And the priest shall examine him on the seventh day, and indeed if the sore appears to be as it was, and the sore has not spread on the skin, then the priest shall isolate him another seven days. Make sure until something happens that you know what sin is. Verse 6, then the priest shall examine him again on the seventh day, this is 14 days now, and if indeed the sore has faded, the sore has not spread on his skin, then the priest shall pronounce him clean. It's only a scab, and he shall be washed from his, or his clothes shall be washed clean. But if the scab should at all spread over the skin after he has been seen by the priest, for his cleansing, he shall be seen by the priest again. And if the priest sees that the scab has indeed spread on the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is leprosy. Now here is my point. And you know what? Let me, before we, before we uh, comment too much, let me just give you the point. God's pastors and prophets must be well trained in the truth, the truth about sin and the truth about righteousness. Can I tell you one of the uh, greatest failings of the modern church? It is ignorant of sin. It excuses sin. The modern church, we are not experts on what God is pleased by and what he's not. Uh, we try to justify things. And well, you know, we got to bring God up into today's culture. Well, that's, that's about as useful as, you know, a screen door on a submarine. That's not going to work. Come on. Now, you know and I know that God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, and human nature hasn't changed. Technology's changed, and, and equipment's changed, and, you know, we have these little I, this, and I, that iPod, iPhones, here, and I, there, and I, and everywhere, and I, and it's all about us. But the truth is that sin is sin is sin. God's pastors and God's prophets should know very well what pleases God and what does not, what is sin and what is not. Right now in this world, we should not be avoiding the doctrine of sin and righteousness. We should be expanding the doctrine of sin and righteousness in this world right now. Yet many churches and many people and leaders are not. They're running around prophesying this and prophesying that. Here a prophecy, there a prophecy, everywhere a prophecy, prophecy. But let me tell you that the reason for prophecy is to draw people back to the feet of Christ and bring repentance, thereby bringing revival. There are several chapters within the book of Leviticus that deal with physical things, with skin diseases, with discharges, with lots of medical things. <laughs> right now, you and I are going to conduct a study about ancient medicine within the time frame of the Middle East where Israel was living. There have been many medical tablets discovered from the ancient world. These tablets span thousands of years and numerous cultures. Some seem to be very physical in their remedies, prescribing various concoctions, herbs, and plants, some of which are still used by modern medicine. Other tablets place a heavy emphasis on the spiritual, emotional side of illness, prescribing sacrifices to certain gods and rituals for expulsion of evil spirits or to cancel a spell. Generally, there appears to have been both a physical and spiritual element to the ancient approach to health care. It was recognized that some illnesses involved the spiritual world while others were purely physical. In some places, there were even separate doctors to consult depending on the spiritual or physical diagnosis. Some researchers claim that the Bible shares this view. The Levitical codes dealing with cleanliness and disease seem very practical and physical. Yet there are some scriptures in which sickness is clearly brought on or reversed by God for a specific purpose, and still others that suggest demon-influenced illness. What are we to make of this? It does appear that the Bible presents sickness as sometimes physical and other times involving the spiritual world. The difference comes in whom you're supposed to go to. Physical remedies are one thing, 
but God alone is the complete healer in the Bible. Chasing after the pagan demon gods was denounced as adultery. By bowing to them, a person would become enslaved to them. The world is complicated, but in the Bible, the answer is not. Reconciliation with God is the only route to peace. In his first sermon launching the Messiah's public ministry, our Lord Jesus Christ reveals seven secrets to healing in our lives. The words of Jesus were so shocking that many were offended and upset. Join Rod Hembry as he explores the words of Jesus for Seven Secrets to Healing on a special teaching DVD. This is an exclusive and original offer only from Quick Study and Bible Discovery TV for a suggested donation of $25 or more. For your copy, write to Quick Study, P.O. Box 150, Murraysville, Pennsylvania, 15668-0150. In Canada, P.O. Box 456, Orangeville, Ontario, L9W 5G2. To order online, go to BibleDiscoveryTV.com or you can call... In Canada, 519-940-8338. In the U.S., 724-733-8336. Remember, Quick Study Television is available on iPhones and all Android portable devices. For more information, go to BibleDiscoveryTV.com and click on mobile TV device. You're watching Bible Discovery TV on Quick Study. Thanks for staying with us as we continue to go through the Bible in one year, and we're going to do the same thing on the next program. As a matter of fact, on the next program, our reading is Leviticus chapter 14 to 15. We are going to look very carefully on the next program, actually in the next Power Guide, at four key steps to righteous restoration of men and women. Now, to define that in the New Testament terms, making disciples. Jesus commanded us to do it, but what does that mean? The Old Testament tells us, the Tanakh. It is a, a very much a part of the Bible, just as the new. Do you know? Mm -hmm. God was giving a list of foods that were permitted and forbidden for the Israelites at this time. So do you know, was this permitted or forbidden? Anything in the water that has fins and scales. Corey, it's the food laws. <laughs> okay, this was safe, this was clean, this was permitted. You got that right. Leviticus chapter 11 verse 9 says, These you may eat of all that are in the water, whatever in the water has fins and scales, whether in the seas or in the rivers, that you may eat. However, what's not permitted, uh, anything that has fins and scales, do not have, I'm sorry, but all in the seas or in the rivers that do not have fins and scales, all that move in the water or any living thing which is in the water, they are an abomination. And so basically, really, that's a lot of the, like the bottom feeders yep. and, and the stuff that picks up all the garbage. Mm -hmm. the, the ocean vacuum cleaners, don't eat those. Don't eat those. Because they are made of the things that they eat on the ocean, mm -hmm. which is not good stuff. Very interesting. Things all right. scales, yes. Things with scales are good. Otherwise, and no. All the fish who with scales said, yay, we're clean. Then they said, uh-oh, <laughs> that's not good news for us. <laughs> anyway, listen quickly. I wanted to mention to you, because this is funny. Uh, I am watching the timeline of Twitter. And you can find us on Twitter. If you follow us on Twitter and send us a message, it is uh, at rod underscore TV. And uh, you can actually just send us a message. We'll get it and we'll read it right here. But uh, George says, hey, what happened to the program? I can't find it anymore. Now, this was uh, a little while back. And all of a sudden, George tweets back recently, he says, I found the program. And then he's got three lines of yay. Uh, <laughs> I found it on YouTube and on the internet. Well, one of the reasons that we actually supply YouTube and Vimeo and on our own website, uh, the programs, is because a lot of times 
TV stations are being moved around, both on cable dials and satellite channels and so on. And so the reason we use the internet and the reason we use the keys, you know, we send the media keys yes. out. Yeah. And, and it has, uh, if you are a subscriber for $15 a month, you get a media key, eight gigabyte media key, and it has all the programs for that month on it. And so if you want to find out more about that, you can write to us or call us. It comes with your power guide, a print companion to this program, which has more teaching. It has four points, not just three. Here's the address, P.O. Box 150, Marysville, Pennsylvania, 15668-0150. And in Canada, P.O. Box 456, Orangeville, Ontario, L9W5G2. It gets right here into the studio. And the power guide for February is right there on the right-hand side. And uh, there it is. Actually, if you look at it, uh, it's uh, the power guide for February. And it's 724-733-8336 in the United States. And it's 519-940-8338. What I meant to say is you can actually look at the power guide if you give online at BibleDiscoveryTV.com. Historian Dr. Arturo Castagloni authored the classic medical work called A History of Medicine, published in 1941. He makes the following quote about 20th century modern medicine. He says, the laws against leprosy in Leviticus 13 may be regarded as the first model of sanitary legislation. In his dissertation on the public history of health, historian George Rosen says, what stopped the plague in the dark ages leadership was taken by the church, as the physicians had nothing to offer. The church took as its guiding principle the concept of contagion as embodied in the Old Testament, the book of Leviticus. The Bible is a practical book of cures, if we pay attention to it. With that we pray, Lord help me to hear what your word says about my health. It's time to strengthen your mind on Bible Discovery TV Quick Study. The question is, where does the Bible say that the seen world, the material world, is created by that which is unseen? How could that be? I thought everything was material. I thought everything could be explained by science. Don't think so. Well, if you think you know the answer to that question, go to BibleDiscoveryTV.com where the answer is. We publish those and give it out to the people on the mailing list every quarter as well. Make sure you get on our mailing list and get the, get the power guide. I want to tell you something, there's a lot of unseen things going on in your life. The unseen things make us act the way we are. And if you're hurting today, you may not even know it. Just because you forgot about that hurt doesn't mean it isn't there. But Jesus said to us, behold, I stand at the door of your heart and knock. And any man or woman who lets me in, I will come in and have fellowship with him. And Jesus Christ will heal the difficulty in your life if you come to him and pray and say, Lord, I believe you died on the cross and rose again and you are my Lord now, I choose you today. Your personal power guide is available online, ready for you right this second. All you have to do is go to BibleDiscoveryTV.com and donate an offering in any amount. It will take you directly to your personal power guide, ready for you. Study with us, get your power guide today.